Just like that, it ends. What's up, Salamato here? Finally back after a couple weeks on hiatus. Been very busy here. It's a back in the day show. Brought to you by Digital Saviors Chicago. Yes, it's one of my companies. One of the things we do is we transfer digital, uh, transfer your old movies, VHS tapes, 8 millimeter tapes, audio cassettes, vinyl, pictures, photos, slides. And yeah, even when you know, I had a client, right? Look at this phone, right? Look at this thing. It's like 13 years old. It's so old, it still has MySpace built into it now. But the client had some pictures uh, from like 13 years ago. They wanted to get off the phone. So no matter what it is, Digital Saviors can transfer it all to digital formats. So it lasts a lifetime. The number 815-556-2685. That's 815-556-2685. Or just visit digitalsaviorschicago.com. Uh, for more information. Hey, there it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. We got to get back into the uh, into the flow of things here. So tonight on the show, and I'll tell you, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were going to have Farley Jackmaster Funk on. But Farley's opened opened up a brand new store, and uh, I, and then I got busy. And uh, it's hard, especially with the season here, with a lot of the things that I do between consulting and everything else. It just got up to be a nightmare. So now I finally have like about a week or two where I can get back into the show and we can go back in the day. And I thought, you know, I've been friends with tonight's guest for about 40 years. Almost, yeah, Jesus, it's a long time ago. And uh, he's an honorary inductee into the U.S. Dance Music Hall of Fame and an original member of the Hot Mix Five. And one of the few guys I could sign in for all these years has been a good friend. And um, we're going to bring him right in. Mickey Mix and Oliver joining us tonight. <laughs> Hey, hey. What's up, great, Mick? Great to be here. <laughs> Finally got you. Uh, so you can hear me and everything, and we can... Yeah, I yeah can, oh, all's good. Beautiful. Isn't that good? Everything works. Yeah, this program, I dig this program here, man, this stream yard we've been using. There's a bunch of different programs that a lot of people use, but for this format, I love this format. I really do, because it's easy to control when you don't have a show producer, you know what I mean? It's there you easy, go. Everything's right in front of you, and... Um, so, Mick, back in the day when you started, you and I met, and uh, you were working at a club called The Oars, okay, and uh, yeah. that's when you and I first met. I was working on Bad Boys at the time, and um, f before that, we were at a club. Pete who was a friend of ours who got the job there, and wherever Pete went, I went, and um, we were working at Culpepper's. You remember Culpepper's way yeah. up on the north side? So. We go to Dior's, and that's where I met you. And that was, God, it had to be about the spring of 82, right? Winter of 82. You were still at Dior's. You were at Jubilation, I think, too, weren't you? Uh, I don't think I was at Jubilation, but you know what? Who knows? Maybe I was. I played so many. <laughs> yeah, the, the 80s are a little foggy for a lot of people. <laughs> so where's the first club you worked, Nick? When did you start? I mean, did you, start, um, you started early, right? Yeah, it was Smuggler's Inn in Munster, Indiana. And so, so oh, when were, what year was that? Do you remember? Um, that was right when BMX started with the Hot Mix 5. So that was probably like late 81. Yeah, yeah, 81. Oh, so you didn't start the disco days. What were you doing before you were a DJ, man? You know, I had been only been DJing about uh, two months. Mm -hmm. And then I got on BMX. So I was just like real new at it still. And so I just had, had a knack for it, I guess. And what did you do before you were DJing? Uh, see, I was going through college and um, just different odd things. Do you remember what you were majoring in? Was it CAF? Yeah. What were you majoring in? Uh, public affairs. <clears throat> it was like a telecommunication public affairs degree. Uh, they called it SPIA at Indiana University. No kidding. So what, when you started doing, because you know you had the hunks, a lot of people don't know what Mickey did. Was well, so One of them was a disconnect, right? Was it hunks and chunks or bits and pieces? Uh, hunks and chunks. That was... was uh, I'm sorry, Hunks and Chunks is one I did after Disconnect, but Disconnect was the master mix medley. Yeah, and was it who ran Disconnect? Was it Ra Raul Cameron or Rafael? Who the hell ran uh, Disconnect? Do you remember who the guy was? Yeah, they called him the captain. What was his name? Captain. Been a what? Captain John or something? Been a long time. Yeah. But yeah, he ran it. And I was like the only guy to get in and on the Midwest because they only were taking producers in New York and LA and. We, uh, me and a guy named Johnny George mm. did this uh, master mix medley of kind of the 80s. And uh, it was, they were just so impressed. They picked it up. It ended up being the biggest seller of all time for Disconnect. Yeah. And, you know, when you did, what, what, was it Bits and Pieces? What's the one that went from Celebration and the Whippet? 
That was uh, Hunks and Chunks. Yeah, and I mean, when you were working on that, we came to your house when you were in Ohio. We had come to your house. Oh, yeah? Had, okay. Yeah, right? And you had about 8,000 feet of reel-to-reel -reel tape on the <laughs> floor. Because I think your story, if I remember, was the attic, right? Was yeah, it upstairs? Yeah. 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 And I said, what the hell is all this shit on the floor? Mom's I came house. <laughs> I came with I came I think I came with Kenny. It was either Kenny or Pete, one or the other. Probably Pete. It, yeah. Was it, yeah. And I said, I said, never saw so much tape on the floor in my life. And then when you were at when we were at the oars, I think you did like a test run of it at the oars. So we had the cassette deck at the oars. Yeah, yeah. And I think you had done a test, but going from celebration to whipping, you know. And know it's funny, Mickey, when you did that, and then no matter what club you went to after through the years. Yeah. Some DJ was always acting as if they were doing that. Oh, I know, all the time. <laughs> you know, it was a trip. It's like you watch these guys and you hear, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And, and the DJ's like this, like he's mixing. Like, dude, stop. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Yeah. So that thing, I, I made that thing, and I, in one month, I sold a 1,000 copies. And then mm -hmm. Paul Weisberg told me, uh, you better lay off. People are calling me all over the friggin' country, even from the world, asking about it. And it's getting too hot. I don't want you to get in trouble. So, uh, really? Yeah. So I, I only did that thousand. Wow. See, so people who have them, that's a collector's piece right there. Yeah. Did you ever do any Richard? Because remember, we had talked a couple months ago about the third one you did, Nick. It oh, was yeah. A <clears throat> hot mixing. Yeah, and I've got a friend of mine who's always driving me nuts. I remember it had swept away in it. And yeah. I remember because you used it even at the cottage <laughs> when, when, when you were at the cottage. We'll get into all that. Yeah. But you never released that one, right? Well, it was supposed to be on Nuance, and they had all the rights verbally, but one of the contracts, they went and pressed it. One of the contracts did not come back, and that was Diana Ross's swept, swept away, so it kind of crashed it. Mm -hmm. But it still got still kind of got leaked out around, so it got some stores and so forth. Nuance, nuance. Wasn't it? Was it next movement on nuance, right? Because you worked on all I do, right? Yeah, yeah. How'd that come about? Because that was a great radio record. That was in rotation. Actually, yeah. not only at BMX, but GCI too was playing the shit out of it. Tom Joyner was even playing it in the afternoon drive. Yeah, that charted really high on Billboard too. Bottoms Up was the first one I did for Nuance. That was top ten Billboard. Mm -hmm. But how did you, who was next movement? Because honestly, God, I never had, like, I never had a clue. And I know you played Magnum Force, Magnum Force a lot too, Cool Out, and yep. those were Chicago guys. But yeah, they did, were. How did the uh, next movement thing come along? Um, they just approached me to mix it. I, I think those guys are in Vegas. Last time I heard. No kidding. Yeah, wow. I think they're still playing out there. That was a great raid. It was about summer of '84, right? I think I was at Kokomo's at that time. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, it had to be. Yeah, I think it was summer of '84. So when you when you're uh, coming through, you're doing mixes. Did you when you were doing your mixes, you were doing them on ten inch reel? <clears throat> How many mixes did you do a week, Mick? Do you remember? Uh, you know, it we we it started out. I think I did Friday and Saturday, mm -hmm. but then we started doing as every fifth. Saturday, uh, Friday, one guy would do it himself. So I was making three hours mm -hmm. on uh, Friday and one on Saturday. So sometimes I was doing four, sometimes one. Now, a lot of people in the group, and for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> we, we've got a lot of groups, the entire Old School Network, which is all part of the Beat Chicago. A lot mm -hmm. of the groups that we have, and I'll go to the BMX group here real quick. Um, a lot of, there, you had done remixes, because I remember Let, Let's Celebrate, which I got mixed up with sky yeah. and yeah. um then there was uh oh here it is let me add that to the screen so th this is the wbmx group for those of you can join the group if you're not a member of the wbmx group we're, we'll probably get ten thousand people tonight uh, oh, nice. in the group but when you, <laughs> you you had done those remixes it was um sky let's celebrate i had a bunch of them Party lights, and, i remember yeah a bunch of them in regular rotation on bmx yeah. Now, when you did, I leak carded them up, right? I mean, yeah. Leak, you know, I'd send it into him, and he'd say, "All right, we'll approve them." And then after I did the first three, he says, "Okay, forget it. Anything you do is approved." Mm. <laughs> what was the, What was the third one, Mick? Do you remember what the third one was? <clears throat> oh no, I, I had like about a dozen. I yeah. had. Um, did you do a rock, rock your world? Did you do a rock your world? Uh, I, mean, I don't think so. I I did a few D trains, a um, uh, couple slaves. Um, boy, I tell you, I have to think about it. You put know, your, put your memory to test tonight, boy. Yeah, I know. Those are like uh, a lot of details, but I, I 
can't remember how many I did, but it was a lot of them. I mean, a real lot. Now, when the mixes started popping, and I mean, really, I mean, before house, I mean, a lot of guys don't remember, you know, tell people the kind of shit we had to play. I mean, before there was house, the shit we were playing in the clubs, man, it wasn't easy to mix, you know? Yeah. You're talking real drummers, real <laughs> drums, you know, some of the stuff you put, because you played the funkier side of stuff too, which I love because yeah, we played a lot of non commercial disco, uh, beat stuff, you know, R&B stuff. And, and that was the kind of the thing in the early 80s. Yeah, I'm going to really test your memory. You were working at a club called The Rain. Remember that? Oh, I think I only did a couple of nights there. Yeah. Yeah, we we came by to see you, and I had gotten, I had become a little intoxicated and literally. Ah. Literally fell asleep in the because remember the rain that they had the rain that yeah. run around, literally sleeping in the rain. Uh, but you know, you know what woke me up? Love Gun. You played uh, Love Gun, Love Gun by Rick James. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's my shit. Right back into nice. the water. Uh, nice. And that was like Southwest Highway because you and I we always worked the South Side for the majority of the time. Yeah, because I, mean, I grew up in Indiana. Yeah, and I remember Scott was working at Wood Hughes when we were at Dior's. Okay. What was, was that joint that was it was like 79th and Cicero, right? Yeah. Yeah, and actually I worked there. Did I, you I were you there working for Chet, right? Him and his yeah, brother. I worked there for quite a while. Yeah, and you know what? That's how when I got to the cottage and then I would bring you and, and you know flip between you and Kenny, because it was like 86, 87. Um Chet was our manager at the cottage, who owned him and his brother had owned Wood Hughes, and he wound up being our manager at the cottage for a while. Yeah. Oh, I think I might lose having a bad signal. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, coming in distorted, unfortunately. Oh. How about now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Uh, no, same. All right. If if it keeps up, uh, log out, log back in. You know okay. what I mean? And I'll bring you right back in if we keep having issues with the uh, audio. Those of you just joining us, it's the Back in the Show, Salam Auto here with Mickey Mix and Oliver, an original member of the Hot Mix 5, and an honorary inductee into the U.S. Dance Music Hall of Fame, where there are only 100 people who are honorary members, and Mickey, well-deserving of being one of them. Hey, Mick, let's let's talk the uh, the, the Division Street scene, because we all work Division Street. You were, you were down there briefly, too, right? Uh, you know, I think you're going to probably have to bring me back in. All right, we're uh, gonna, yeah, you're, you're all right. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce you out and then you come back in. Hey, you just came back. Oh, just okay. Back. Is that Perfect. better? Yeah. Right. Back. Let's talk Division Street briefly because you know in the early '80s there was Hands, Mothers, P.S. Chicago, Benigan, or Shenanigan, all of them. You you were at on Division Street with us on and off too, right? Briefly. Oh yeah, I worked at uh, P.S. for a while. Um, I, of course, I probably did a night everywhere there. Uh, Mothers, BBC. Eddie Rockets went on that. Yeah, see, but because you were you, because you were Mickey Oliver, you never had to open shenanigans. Because if you back then, I remember Steve Greer had this really weird rule. If you oh, want, oh yeah, Steve Greer, yeah. yeah. If you want him and that Samoya dog of his, if you want to work mothers, you have to open shenanigans one Saturday morning out of the month. Wow, so, what? So you had to get there, and, and and that was the back in the day. When, remember the satellite dishes were about as big as a train? Yeah. And they had all these satellite dishes, and you had to put on all these sports games for all the yuppies at that time. Uh -huh. I want to say it was about 83, 84. But okay. then, and then you got the Olivers, and then the suburbs were really kicking. Talk about Olivers, man, how much fun that was. You know, it's crazy. Of all the clubs I worked the longest was Olivers. Isn't that crazy? Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the Gazulises weren't even related. They were Greek. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was just a name they pulled out of a hat. <laughs> yeah. So how'd you wind up out there? How'd you wind up on uh, the downers? Somebody came up and told me that, uh, hey, they'd like to another DJ. I can't remember who. It says, hey, they uh, want to hire you here. They're open. So I went down there and I saw Tom that time, talked to him, and they called me maybe a month later and uh, put me on. They wanted to build a night with me Thursdays. Mm -hmm. And that night, it ended up being one of the longest bar nights. That thing never died. It just always rocked on. So then they had me at Wednesday at Hurricanes doing kind of the same thing. And then mm -hmm. they had me at their Lime Rickies up north. So yeah, I was, uh, so I was had three nights for a little while tied up with them. Yeah, they had, um, 
Well, everything was Oliver's, and then they just, rather than change the club, they just changed the name. Yeah, that's all they, that's all they <laughs> yeah, did. Her, <clears throat> it was Hurricanes, was, <clears throat> what was that, Grand Avenue, right? Was it yeah, Hurst? where was that at? Elmhurst. Elmhurst, Lake Street, and Elmhurst. <clears throat> it was yeah. Lake Street? Okay. Yeah, because remember how dangerous it, was, dangerous it was out in front of the club? You literally, the minute you walked out of the club, Lake Street was right there, and you, I mean, there are people getting plowed. Wow. It was dangerous coming out of there. Man. Hurricanes, though, they had remember they had that like the whole machine that they had like a every hour they would do like a whoosh of air yeah. that would just blow you away. Yeah. yeah, let me tell you, you drink a half a bottle of Yukon Jack and get hit with that kind of <laughs> air, you're getting knocked over. Yeah. So let's talk Hot Mix Five Records, man, because you had some huge hits on Hot Mix 5 and the uh you guys did most of the stuff at Sea Grape, right? With Tommy? Yeah, yeah, that uh -huh. early. And then later and then Jimmy with Jimmy at uh with Jimmy what was it? Norland? Jimmy Drosso's other Yeah, I ended up buying a buying a uh twenty four track and a two inch reel machine and, and so forth. And so I ended up setting it up and Jimmy helped run it for me. Yeah, what was the studio? Was Star something? Oh uh Star Tracks. Star Tracks, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the record label. Whose idea was it to do the label? Did you guys I mean, collectively do it or decide? I mean, because at that time, it was just really you, far. I mean, it was you, Kenny. It was only Ralph. me, Kenny, and Ralph. Ralph. And, uh, and I told them we needed to do it, but nobody did anything. So I just did it myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started it all myself, funded it, put out, did a, my house is bigger than a your house with a grant. Mm -hmm. And uh, we pressed about. 5,000 copies and sold them like hotcakes. And mm -hmm. uh, I may mean, sold them like two weeks. So I took the money from it and I got Ralphie in the studio and did you did used to hold me. I paid for that. Yeah. And how many, uh, now, how many times did he get to the point where then you figured, okay, the record's done? How many hours do you figure were put into you used to hold me? Was that a quickie or did it take time? Mm -hmm. uh, no, we just, I think we might have had a, two sessions or so, <clears throat> maybe three to <clears throat> get all the tracks down. Mm -hmm. And then we, and then we had a couple of remix sessions to do mixes. <clears throat> and then How many, uh, did, that was it. Did, now, were you able to license it too? I mean, obviously, did you license it? Oh yeah. Yep. yeah. All over the place. We yep. sold about a hundred thousand of them. Did you sell that money copy? That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> that was our biggest seller. Our second biggest was intensity, 70, yeah. 75,000. Yeah, remember when I called you about ten years ago? I called, I say, dude, you gotta you gotta throw some Benny Benassi shit on top of intensity and toss it out because that's when that Electra House sound was really hot. You know, yeah, they yeah. were calling it Electra. Every you know, it's the thing. Every every month now, they rename them. You, oh, that's bluesy, jazzy, uh, country, funky house. What what is that? It, no, it's house. You know, that's right. But that that intensity was light years, man, light years ahead of shit. Because there really wasn't anything banging like that other than Chip's record, you know, if you only knew, had that same snap. What was it, the S10, I think? What the hell was it, the, the sample for the drum? <laughs> yeah, is that Roland uh, S? What number was that? I, I think, think it was the S10. Was it the S10? <clears throat> Does that sound right? I can't remember. I don't think so. I think it was uh, the, the drum machine was a S50, was it, or something? Was it? Yeah, probably. I don't know. I, I'm all. <laughs> But man, and and you had um, every once in a while you bring some test pressings to the cottage, you know. And God rest his old Benji was Benji, although Benji never wanted to climb the ladder. Remember, I had the ladder at the cottage. He had to climb the ladder. He wouldn't climb it. Benji would not climb the ladder. He had his backpack on. He's like, I'm not climbing up. I said, Fine, I'll come down. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he'd hand me a bunch of test pressings. Just me. What's the BPM? He says, About you. Okay, great. One twenty. Throw it on. Yeah, sounds great. Just uh, I, I think you and Kenny, well, I think you brought the acetates or something. It might have been breaking up, breaking down. I uh, didn't bring the acetates, and then Kenny had the acetates of um, Can You Dance. Oh, uh, nice. And um, you know, that was the thing back then. A lot of DJs, don't, it was great to have people bring stuff literally right off the press, Mick. You know, you yep. right yeah. off the press and, you know, you know, a lot of guys think, oh, you know, this guy, he did, for, this guy did this at this club. But all of us DJs in the clubs were all playing a lot of the same stuff. It wasn't just like one guy did Babe We're Gonna Love Tonight <laughs> in yeah. the view on a funk, you know. But yeah. if, 
nobody went nowhere. Nobody didn't go nowhere. They didn't know that that was happening everywhere. And that was the beauty. That's why it was so big is that it was happening all across the city from the clubs to the school dances yeah. to the private. Cause you, not only did you do the clubs, you did a lot of parties too. Oh yeah. Right? Oh yeah. What were, what were some of the big parties you remember school wise? Oh man. I have to think about it. there was every weekend I, I had like two or three. So I'd try to time them South side, Chicago, North side. I try to fit three to four in mm. until I could fit in. Cause you figure an hour to go to this one, hour to go to that one, play an hour. Yeah, and then you got to shoot the shit with people. Hey, how you been? Yeah, nice to yeah. see you. The, the, uh, you remember the WGN thing, right? When they were um, when WGN came to the, was they came to the house, right? Did they come to your house, or I'm talking a long time ago? Uh oh, when I was on DJing. Yeah. Oh, that was their studio. I was down at their studio. So oh, that was a studio. What was the one? There was a video, and we've got. Oh, a, that was a cable station in Northwest Indiana. They oh. they came to my house. Yeah. Oh, so that was actually more of a local access thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, remember when Armando was doing his local access show? Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, a lot of people might not remember. You know, when you guys were on the FM and then you went to GCI and then back to BMX, you guys were on the AM. Yeah. Remember the 1490 Lee put everybody on the, on the AM? Yeah, the GCI. We yeah, hey. I was AM. No, no, you were on the BMX AM on 1490. There was Hot Mix 5 radio. And he did it because Lee had told me uh, last week he had brought it up to me. And here's well, something. If you, got here, a million, if you got a million dollars, Mick, 1490s, yeah. on, it's it's up for sale. And really? the studios, oh, God, Matt, Matt's probably watching. Matt, send me the pictures. Matt's got pictures of the studio over there. It's still... The uh, was it W O P A or whatever it was? Oh, it's still on top of the old folks. Home? Yeah, yeah, I pass it all there. the time. Yeah, the antenna. <laughs> God, go for ribs over, go for rib tips at Charlie Robinson's. Oh, yeah, good stuff. But go ahead, you were gonna say, go ahead. Yeah, I was at we were at BMX, and then we made the jump to GCI, and then they gave us uh, AM 1390, they put us on the AM there. So I had a shift on AM. 39 AM 1390. What Kenny had a day, Ralph had a day, and I had a day, and I think Mario had a day. Yeah, Monday through that, Thursday. Yeah. Now, how did you guys decide? You know, okay, Scotty's Scott's gone. Um, drilling. How do, I mean, the plug and play for new guys, basically. I mean, was it? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just saying, I, Mario. Okay. How did Mario wind up? I know Mario and Kenny are real tight. Was it just it was a convenient thing? How did think, it work out for you guys? Uh, well, when we were at BMX and we were leaving, Far, uh, Farley had, I think Farley really was only with us two and a half to three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, first Scott was gone, then, then and we brought in Julian. Mm -hmm. it, but uh, then um, uh, Farley left shortly right thereafter. And uh, he went to GCI because he wanted mm -hmm. to do his own thing. Mm -hmm. So but the Hot Mix 5 was always the core was me, Ralph, and Kenny. Yeah. And for the 10 years we were on radio, us three were always stuck together. But when we went to GCI, Farley wanted to go back to BMX and because we were number one at BMX. So he went back to BMX, and we took over at GCI, and then we were number one. We were creaming them wherever we went, mm -hmm. me and Kenny and Ralph together. So then uh, Mario was left over on Farley's team. So Mar Mario stayed on with us. And we were at GCI about five years, six years. Mm -hmm. Something like that. No, you were in the pools too, right, Mick? I mean, were you yeah, a billboard? Yeah. I can't remember. Were you a billboard, billboard reporter too? No, I never did that. Yeah, but you were in the pools, right? Yeah. And, um, see, I was in imports, but did I like I always looked for clubs that were in audio talent. This way, if I needed extra copies of shit, I had yeah. it. You know, so I didn't have to nice. pay for it. Um, but at Audio Talent, uh, there were, God, you know, you had 50, what, 50 members, sometimes 75 members. Yeah. It floated. It floated everywhere. Now, how often do you, did you have to go down there, or did Rocky just send your shit out to you? Because, I mean, if you weren't coming into the city. I think I came down about every uh, about every week. Tell you a funny, funny quick story is uh, I, I was new to the city. Nobody knew who I was. And uh, I had just done, got on Disconnect. So I went into uh, IRS because I heard he got everything, you know, that Paul mm -hmm. did. So I walked in there 
I said, like to join? He says, what's your name? I go, Mickey Oliver. And uh, this is uh, pre-BMX. Mm. He goes, how long have you been a DJ? I says, eh, about a month or two. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, it's a two-year wait, kid. I go, well, I'm on Disconnect coming out next issue. And, oh, Captain Mike, that was his name. So he goes, really? And he wanted to break my balls so hard. He got on the phone and called them. He goes, I have this guy here. What's your name? I go, Mickey Oliver. And he goes, uh, Mickey Oliver. And he goes, uh-huh. What? Uh-huh, uh huh. Okay. He hung the phone up. He goes, number six just opened up. <laughs> then, yeah. then this this guy was massaging my shoulder and you know, I was a little suburban guy, you know, and mm -hmm. but I was uh, you know, I was always the funny guy. And uh and I said, Hey, uh he goes, No offense, but any guy with a nickname Knuckles I'm afraid of and uh he's like, <laughs> yeah, so his head off and me and Frankie became friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and imports was a rough pool to get into, man. It was now you couldn't get into it because they yeah, had a short amount. Yeah, Paul suffered fools. <laughs> he did not suffer fools lightly either. He was very strict about shit for feet, and then you know, and he had a really great like early on when I because I got in in eighty eighty one, so it's probably right around you. Remember because yeah. when you went and remember the small little building that Paul was in originally, it was in the in the garage. It was about the size of my studio here. That mm -hmm. was the original size of the original imports. And then Paul moved again, and then he moved again. But uh, it was very serious business back in the day to be in the pool. I mean, yeah, uh, it was. That was the thing. And they were very, um, very, uh, very adamant about your feedback. Yeah, Frank, Frank Val, Frank was a great guy. Frank sells. There was a they had Tony Mendoza, Frank. Uh, you know, all through the years, imports always had. Even was it Chip worked? The Chip was uh, at imports for a while too. Yeah, he was selling or you know do it selling. Uh, yeah, Quick Mix, Quick Mix. It was one of my one of my one of Mix Show DJs on the beat. He worked there. Stacy, Stacy. Then Stacy. Do you remember when Stacy had his own store? Remember he opened up a store on North Avenue. No, about, uh, 90, about 91, 92, Stacy had a store well, uh, over by Best Buy, eat way east, like North Avenue, closer to Second City. Wow. Stacy had a store briefly there, and we would go in there every once in a while if I was going in that direction. Because by 92, I had started getting involved in the other aspect of things. I started working with Frank and Rodrigo and Modern Tracks and the Internet. More Started to get more involved in the Internet. Now, do you remember... The first, I mean, your first club gig mix that you got paid for. You remember what it was and what you got paid for? Uh, first club gig was Smuggler's Inn. And, and how um, much you get paid? Oh, gosh, I don't know. But it, it was, uh, I was the highest paid guy at the time for that place. It was at Smuggler's Inn chain. They had them all over the country. So they had to, like, do a special thing for me. <laughs> so, you because, you know, a lot of guys get me like taught like when Steve Hurley was working at High Rollers I go down the block this when we were at the cottage and Steve was working at High Rollers which was like right down Ogden and right. Steve sit there with his head and, oh, man I didn't get paid yet <laughs> uh, <laughs> chasing the owners around for like thirty three dollars <throat> you know wow. and, and even at the cottage after a while because the owner had a thing going with you know a, a female DJ you and I both know uh, and then he fired me to hire her, and then they closed down in like six months after that. But uh, sometimes it was rough getting paid. A lot of DJs, you get screwed a lot. You yeah. Know? A lot of DJs get screwed. And then when you're going to buy your records, it's like, shit, I got $18. Eh, I got to buy these two records. I'll be <laughs> broke, but I got to have the records. Yeah. So is there any reissues coming, Mick? Anything on Hot Mix 5 Records? Anything you're going to do, reissue music? Mm -hmm. No, but um, the musical I've been doing, <clears throat> I've been working on a lot of new stuff for that. Yeah, let's talk about that, especially Revolution <laughs> Chicago. Go ahead. Yeah, I um, summer of 2019, I premiered in previews, which in the theater world means, you know, kind of your not a full, full review. It's like a, they call it prior to releases. Like a but sizzle it reel? Yeah, I did like a, <clears throat> no, it's, it was the full show, but oh. it was in trial mode. Okay. Right, where you like preseason for baseball. And so we did that and I ran it at a theater, uh, 773 theater in downtown Chicago, Wrigleyville. And it had some sellouts. It did pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, moving forward, you know, of course, the pandemic and all that stuff started. So there was a no theater. But now that <laughs> things are backing up, I'm uh, close to getting a deal in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So the looks like Revolution, 
Revolution Chicago will be open in late summer Las Vegas. Do you know? Uh, can you say where? Or? Uh, not yet, because you know they put you under these contracts and stuff. Yeah. Those are so those. that way, you know, the other guy don't know he's getting booted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kind of like the clubs. Don't say anything that yeah, you were yeah. here. <laughs> Well, but so we'll, talk, talk about the show then. What's the, I mean? So I, I, it's, it's basically the Hot Mix Five story. Mm -hmm. So it's um, story how the Hot Mix Five came about, and Lee Michaels, of course, being intricate in it all. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, it's a lighthearted story. So there's some, um, you know, comedy in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of that to go around from back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so yeah, it. It pretty much tells the story, and uh, the music's pretty cool, and uh, I, I think it's going to be really well because uh, uh, it's geared more to Vegas now that since we went through previews. So, are you still doing mixes for any stations anywhere? Oh, you were on the Sirius too, right? God, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. I had my own show for a while, about yeah. a year or so on Sirius. And, and you know, when you, were you doing the mixes, or were you? What channel was it? What state was it? Serious uh, I, or was it XM? It was serious, but it right. was that uh, I'll, I'll know the name of it if I think of it, if I hear it. But anyways, on uh, a serious channel where all the other DJs were, mm -hmm. and I had my uh, you know there they kind of played them randomly. I sometimes they like some of my mixes. I'd see them playing for two weeks, mm -hmm. three times a day. They were very East Coast based there because when I was pro, they wanted yeah. to launch a house channel. And um, I was, I, I helped, uh, my contact was at BJ Stone. Does he sound familiar? He BJ was the head Stone. of BJ. No. He was the head of the urban program. We never got along. This is when it was still separated, Nick. It was still okay. like XM and Sirius. And um, put together the house music yeah. channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they wanted a very East Coast space. They said, wait a minute. You know, the house is from Chicago. I have no problem with the East Coast base, but if you're going to do a house music channel, then you have to have house music from Chicago. Yeah. And uh, they launched the channel, and they just let it sit, and then it withered away, and it died. It was about 2004, I want to say. Three to wow. Three. Yeah, okay. A long time ago. Yeah, but I mean, you were doing those, Mick, that you were doing work for Sirius, and then I found out you weren't. Because, you know, you come and go. Contact comes in, you know. Even though we've known each other 40 years, you're, you're here, you're there, you're out, you're, yeah, in, yeah. you're out. Well, yeah, I was on Arizona radio for several years, the energy radio out there. Oh, that's right. You did energy. Yeah. Energy, what was it? 101. And, and uh, they're on two frequencies. Yeah, two, 101 two. and 92.7. Yeah. And FM. they've got Mega, too. Don't they? They're the same company on that Mega, the old school. Yeah, one. yeah. That's yeah. how I met DJ Perry. Yeah. BS with him while he was, he was playing in Mega. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because when you were... When you were at BMA, and I was going back and forth to Phoenix, and our, our mutual friend Dave was on a KZZP. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I did a couple mixes for KKFR then, and I was amazed at how funky Arizona was. And I mean, fuck, I mean, like Midnight Star, uh, you know, they were into more of that funk side. There was only certain songs from Chicago you could get away with. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something about the Hot Mix Radio Network. They were on... Quite a, Andy Starr did a wonderful job of oh, my. on about 30 stations, but they were trying to break into the ABC radio network mm -hmm. and, and uh, they were, you, you know, they said, you know, hey, it's got to be like something special. So they said they were going to do a mix of the de decade. So what they did, they hired me to do it. <clears throat> really? So yes, yeah, so I flew to Arizona and I did it with Dave mm -hmm. and uh, I did, brought all, a lot of my edits and a lot of my tricks and they got the deal for ABC. Yeah, because actually, you know what? I think they were up to 150 stations at one time, Mick. I think they got it that high. Yeah. That, that was Andy Starr, Dave, and who was the other guy that was with them? Well, Marcus Schultz, that's when Mar he started. Yeah, Marcus, before he, before he came Mr. Euro trans dude. <laughs> well, what happened with him was is uh, he started doing, he was doing more like Dave's uh, legwork. Mm -hmm. And so then at the same time, I started Powerhouse Records with Andy. Mm -hmm. And... He goes, all right, well, we're going to do this. I go, dude, if you want to make this successful, I'm going to take the first issue, do it out of Chicago with my buddies. I'll sell them and I'll start the buzz. Mm -hmm. So I did that for the first two. And then I moved to Arizona and we did it from there. And within a year, we were listed on that Dance Music Report as the number one remix service in the country just overnight. 
on DMR. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so then Marcus brought him on to do mixes. So that's how he started doing mixes. And he called himself the Slice because I taught him to edit. Mm -hmm. wow. And uh, of course, he's a superstar now. And, yeah. uh, and then when he was new, Andy goes, hey, can you bring him to Chicago and show him around? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he flew in. I grabbed him from the airport. He stayed mm -hmm. in my place. I brought him around and shown everything. And uh, then he went back and there. And it was a good, you know, it was a good experience for him just to see some of the big club things in another city. And of course, you know, he just blew up from there. Became a billboard reporter and everything. Yeah, I had interviewed him. Well, actually, uh, my partner Chris had interviewed him for our EDM American Network, and um, Dave had sent us pictures of Marcus back then. And Marcus looked like he turned like he turned sixteen shades of white. He was, where'd you get that at? <laughs> yeah, you know, well, we have mutual friends, and then he was like, "Oh, wow, you guys go that far back?" I said, "Well, that was at the halfway point of our careers." <laughs> When he got married to Heather, he had a very, very exclusive private wedding. Only like, I don't know, about 20 people, but I was there, one mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. Wow. So how much were powerhouses? I can't, you know, powerhouses weren't a monthly thing. How, yeah. how often were the powerhouses? Made? Monthly. Yeah, it was monthly. It was monthly? Yeah, and we sometimes we've had two things monthly, club classics besides the mm -hmm. regular powerhouse. Wow. You know, when I had... um. When I it was it strike it up right strike it up was a killer, a killer yeah strike it up yeah we did a good job on that one yeah. and was it dangerous on the dance floor was it yours or was it was that dangerous? I think I did that one yeah yeah I mean some of those were real yeah you know, and, and that market you guys entered into was pretty fierce I mean you had Ultimix oh yeah you know and you, you had tough tough uh, competition but you know what I, I I told Andy the reason it work I got all my Chicago boys behind me. So me and Ralphie were doing mixes. And yeah, and, and that helped. It really did. Yeah. Because you were, I mean, and you weren't, yeah, Ultimix did a lot of commercial stuff. You did a lot of the club stuff. I mean, and then Razor Maid was known for its alternative stuff. Yeah. You know, remember the orange? Because you, we all had that. It was the orange vinyl. Remember with that old you bastard? Or whatever oh, yeah. Called? I remember the, the silver white with the, uh, Oh yeah, vicious Senator, pink, can't dead or alive. Yeah, vicious <laughs> pink. Yeah, how'd you get Rodney, Mick? When you well, you know, I was uh, I was in Florida, and uh, I bumped into him, mm -hmm. and uh, he wouldn't talk to nobody, shooing everybody away, no pictures. He was like nothing. And I went to him. I said, "Hey, I work for radio station Chicago. I took Chic Good Times. You know the song, just the groove, and I put your jokes on it, and put it in my mix." Mm -hmm. He goes, "No kidding. Nobody ever thought of that." <laughs> and then. Uh, Later on, I'm there. He goes, DJ, come over here. And he goes, hey, what are you doing tonight? I says, yeah, we, nothing. He goes, you want to go hang out? I go, sure. He goes, hey, kid, just because we go out, does this mean we got to fall in love and call in right? I go, no, <laughs> I'm not going to bother you. Mm. <laughs> so was, how'd, how'd you get him to record? We do him on the phone? How'd that happen? He, he offered to. He goes, where do you, well, yeah, you're, I'm Chicago. He goes, you travel to Canada? I go, I don't think so, no. And he goes, all right, let me talk to my agent. I'll do some voiceovers for you. I go, really? Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> wow, that was fun. Yeah, he offered. I didn't even think he, you know, had the balls to ask him. <laughs> so where did you get, you know, when you press those things, even like Billy, everybody had their names. Did you just do a one-off on those pressings? For what your name on them and everything? Was it just a one-off? How the, Because, no, I could never get a one-off printed. For for what you talking about? When for I, your like, scratch trade, you know, for riding when you used them in the mixes. Oh, I put them on. Uh, I did better than that. I put them on uh, hot uh, on uh, H Hot Mix Five One Hundred One, the first record on the B side. I put Rodney Dangerfield on there. No kidding, never knew yeah. that. Yeah, that way I could just scratch it whenever I wanted. <laughs> no, no shit. Wow. I always pull out a clear one that way. <laughs> That's great. Wow. Talk to me about Candy J when you guys worked with Candy J. Get it? Oh, I was going to tell you one other thing. The Satellite Music Network, right after GCI, I was on that network, uh, over 100 stations. Mm -hmm. Didn't ABC, ABC bought them, right? I think ABC wanted to buy Satellite Music Network. At, well, they did when I played. ABC owned it. Yeah, yeah, because Zoltar was, had mentioned that to me. That was, that was out of Dallas, right? Dallas, yeah. Glenn yeah. Cosby ran the R&B channel, and he, he hired me. So I was well, on, yeah, 100 ton of stations you know what glenn 
taught me how to use Selector. I took a okay. crash course when we were doing cyber radio and I needed to learn how to use Selector. I yeah. never seen. He gave me a crash course, the nicest guy in the face of the earth. He I is. Felt, yeah, absolutely. Anytime yeah. I said, anytime you got a business venture, let me know. We'll blow it out across all of our networks. Because he, you know, he he was, and you meet. There's a few guys that are like that, Mick. You know that resonate with you through the years. You don't see him an awful lot, but anytime he's brought up, nothing but great memory. He he didn't have to take all that time to show me how yeah. to use selector. Unfortunately, that was a quick learn. But Jesus, what a nightmare! It yeah, was. he was a super dude, that's for sure. And I think he's still on the air at V. He, I think he's doing part-time, right? Yeah, yeah. I bumped into him, uh, I don't know, about a year ago there. Yeah, last time I talked to him, he was do he was on the air, and he was doing Because I call him. I'm still like a kid. Hey, how you doing? You know, if I hear somebody on the air, hey, how's things going? And he was doing this No Ego. He had, like, a brand called No Ego, and there were hmm. hats and shirts. But that was a couple of years ago. Jeez. Uh -huh. You know, some of the people who are listening, you got Peter Aparicio, who are watching. Oh, uh, nice. Nice. Uh, God, I'm just going through all the names here. Uh, a friend of mine, Mai Tai, who came to the cottage and lived at Oliver and went to Oliver's, too. So many people went to both of them back then, you know, Mick, between nice. Oliver's and the cottage. Um, and they're still speaking to us. That's pretty good. Yeah, right. <laughs> Evidently, I haven't offended everybody yet. I've tried. Trust me, I'm still working on it. So, Revolution Chicago. When, when can we expect that here in? Uh, I mean, in uh, Vegas, the end of the summer, hopefully. Yeah, late late summer. Are you gonna have promos? Anything you're gonna debut across the net? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have a full marketing and everywhere. So yeah. uh, let's talk I've about. Been... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Right. Yeah, we haven't even started casting yet, um, but uh, I'm, I want to try to do is get four strong voices. That's the key to Vegas. And, of course, the talent's all floating around there. Yeah, yeah. And I love it out there, dude. I love Vegas. My family's been out there for about 40 years. I love it out there. I got to meet uh, Harris um, tomorrow or the next day out there. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Well, you make sure you let me know so we can keep updating people. The um, shit, I just lost my thought because I I had wanted to ask you something and I lost it. Think of a story, favorite cartoon, Mick Bugs Bunny, Scooby Doo, what? Oh, you know, I really wasn't a cartoon guy. Oh, come um, on. I used, you know watched him as a kid, but I don't think I really uh, had that guy. I went to, I, you know, I probably like Bugs Bunny. Yeah, how about may, may, maybe Mickey Mouse because my name was Mickey. <laughs> Movie, give me a movie you watch that you never get bored of ever. Oh, used cars. Uh, <laughs> That's too fucking classic. high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we put that video up on the uh, back of the day group, man. And yeah. It's amazing, Mickey. You talk to people who've never seen used cars. But what, what, what planet are you from? Yeah, yeah. You know, like Slapshot, right? You think, yeah. Who's never seen Slapshot? And then you realize. Well, yeah, it is 1976 and 1980. Some of these people weren't even <laughs> born. Yeah, yeah. I never, never get bored. And used cars was filmed down in Arizona. Yeah, it sure yeah. was. Maricopa yeah. County. <laughs> there. Is that where it was, Maricopa? Is that yeah, they, they, they went to Maricopa County uh, Courthouse. Wow. See, now that I just knew it was Arizona. But and man, and the movie, know. I know you had your movie experience too. I, I had a song in the movie Red Heat, Schwarzenegger Belushi. Schwarzenegger, that's right. How'd that come about? How'd you wind up with a song in a soundtrack? Um, you know, just somebody contacted me and they said, uh, you've had a lot of Billboard songs, want to get that Chicago House sound in mm -hmm. there and uh, see if you'd like to submit a couple songs. I submitted, submitted a couple and they liked uh, the one song just by coincidence. You know, I don't know when I when I did that Jack and National Anthem, I didn't know what lyrics to do. So I just went in there and started doing stuff. Dance left, <laughs> dance right. Yeah. So they they had an aerobic dance scene. The guy goes, ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> really? But that the, what the thing was, they put it in the aerobic dance scene and the, you know, Schwarzenegger and Belushi talked to the bad guy's girlfriend. And I mean, well, first of all, they showed the people dancing, dance left, dance right. They choreographed it to that. <laughs> and they went in the office and you could still hear the song. So they had to pay me for it. So I had like a three minute score. You believe that? Uh, That's like unusual for. Yeah. I mean, movie. for some Play your song for cool. three minutes, like, who you, who you, son, son of the producer or something? <laughs> was, Red, was Red Heat filmed here? Was Red, yeah, filmed? Chicago. 
Yeah, I, if, if, see, because at that time, you know, I was active, really active, 82 to 85. And then the DJing stuff really took over. So uh, I had gotten on. I, I stopped chasing it a long time ago. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because, you know, like any, even the DJ thing, look, you, it's, just, it's either going to work or it's not. And eventually, you got to find, you got to make sure you got something else you can do in your life right. <laughs> to make money. And uh, speaking of making money and what you're going to do with your life, look. <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> What's up, dad. Mickey? That's my dad. <laughs> I used to call him. My, that's my Yoda. I listen to him. That's my Yoda. What's up, guys? How y'all hey, doing? Hey, hey, <laughs> Lee Michaels. For those who don't know, you can see the screen here. You see Lee. You can even see your name. Oh, uh, how about that? How you doing, Mickey? Good. It's so good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Uh, we got a birthday coming up soon, huh? I know. Me and Lee got them right next to each other, Sal. That's yeah, right. Yeah, because he, your Lee, yours is the twenty eighth, right? Correct. And Mickey, yep. one's yours. Yours is what the twenty sixteenth June. Yeah. Oh, June. oh, yeah. You got yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. yeah Lee's yeah. gonna be Lee's gonna be thirty one. That's right. That's right. I've been, li I've been lying, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's his story, and he's sticking to it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I, where are you, Mickey? I'm in Arizona right now. Mom's oh, house. Oh, I'm right next door. I'm back in Vegas. Yeah, I know you are. Matter of fact, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be up. I was going to actually surprise you. So, so the cat's out of the bag now, but I'm going to try to be there day after tomorrow. Oh, sweet. Okay. So, yeah, well, yeah. definitely uh, hit me up. You got the I number. Will. I definitely That's will. Gotcha. Definitely. <laughs> we'll go hang out and do something. And maybe right, take, wrong. take pictures and take yeah, pictures right. and say hi. Take pictures, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see and hear you, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they got a Portillo's out by you now, don't they, Lee? Or is that no, out by you? No, I think they closed it. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. It's probably because the hot dogs needed a hacksaw to get through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't taste so good by the time they got to Vegas. Uh, how about, <laughs> yeah. You still got Carl's Jr. by you That's and Mr. Taco? Mick, you still got Carl's Jr. And, and Jack in the Box by you, right? Uh, Carl's Jr. in Vegas. I don't know about here, though. Yeah, Jack in the Box and Carl's are, are here. Yeah, I think that's Vegas. I haven't seen them around yeah. here. Yeah, that's some, that's some good eating right there, but there ain't a healthy thing about them. Love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially at uh, like midnight, you want to go buy uh, Jack in the Box and get those little cheap tacos. You get you know, two for a buck or something like that. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lee, last time, Mickey, I forgot. I think you were doing a show on Grand Avenue, Mick, um, yeah. and I came to see you. And uh, so Mickey had a couple gigs. So later on, I think it was later that night, we, I took him to Mr. Taco. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. The, the spot. <laughs> and Mickey's looking at it. He's like, what do I do? I eat it, man. Just eat it. It's <laughs> Just good, eat it. good shit right there. But Jump in. The, the rice. Remember I had that rice with the nice pork on the top? Nice stuff. Uh, uh, mama. <laughs> yeah, yes, get, sir. You don't get that out by you, Lee. No, no, not at all. You know, Lee, Lee, Mickey and I, when we were talking earlier, you had them on the AM, correct? Was it at GCI or was it at BMX? Because I don't remember. Mickey, I, I think Mickey's right. BMX. See, Mick? Yeah. Oh, were we on uh, simulcast, right? Yeah, yeah. Simulcast exactly. now. Yep. But when I was actually on the oh. air, on the air was GCI AM thirteen ninety. Because I told Mickey, I told Mickey Lee, and I'm gonna. I, Matt sent me the pictures. I got pictures of uh, the the studio still there, of what it looks like today. I'll share them in the uh, group later after the broadcast. But Matt was over there um, a couple of days ago, and in Oak Park. Yes, WP. No. Yeah, the uh, station. <laughs> The station's for sale. You got a million dollars. You can buy the AM. Everything's still there, dude. Are you Everything serious? Everything is still wow. there. The arc is still there. The antenna's still, everything's still up there. Wow. Oh, it's good stuff. So, yeah. That's he, amazing. Yeah, I'm going to put the pictures up later. Mick, did you used to, when you went there, did you hang out? Did you have a uh, favorite who was on the air? Because everybody knows Ronique was my favorite. So, yep. <laughs> Actually, I like Lee. <laughs> yeah. Not because they're here, but I always like listening. Good to answer. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, you used to call me in the mornings and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's your wake up call. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there was a mix that I did, 
and I'll never I got reamed out for it because Kenny got reamed out by you, Lee. This was on this was in the John Roby era, Mick. When everything yeah. was I owe you one more shot, blah blah blah. It was the same shit over yeah, and over yeah. and over. It just drove me nuts. So I put I handed in a mix you shook me all night long by ACTC. You yeah. dropped the bomb on me, Cynthia Manley, Stefano Puglia, and Lee he must have reamed Kenny. What was up with your guess? What's wrong with him? <laughs> I got reamed for that one. But, you know, back then, like you said, Mick, when we were talking earlier, you know, there was no house in 81, 82, 83. It was R&B club music, really, Yeah. for yeah. lack of a better term. Yeah. We, we didn't have that much shit, that kind of stuff to play, and there was only so much high energy you were going to play through the night. Yeah. You know? And other than that, it was Arthur Baker and John Roby all night long. Yeah. And then, and then House came along. Do, do you remember the first House record, Mick, that, I mean, that you played aside from your own? Did somebody bring you any test pressings? Oh, that, yeah, everybody, everybody bought me everything. Um, was it Steve's record or was it somebody else's before you? Before probably might have been Steve's first yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Lee, what did you think when you first heard House? Because you were partying and hanging out. I mean, you were still you yeah. still had to go out and hang out, Lee. When you yeah, house. yeah, hung out a little bit. Um, I, I, I loved it. I mean, I, I love dance music. I love up-tempo driving beats, you know, so I, I'm, I'm an old, you know, disco head. So, it, and it was closely aligned with that, but in a raw form. Mm. And he was more importantly, of his time in his vision, Sal. I mean, he, he had this vision of bringing that art of that sound to radio mm -hmm. and, it just happened to be found five guys that were really good, and boom! But it was Lee's vision. Yeah, you know, I was looking for something different. The, the the battle between GCI and BMX during that time, everybody was playing basically the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and I wanted to to differentiate BMX from GCI, and that's why I went to the streets and found the the five guys. Um, and you know, the rest is history. And, yeah. and I wasn't afraid to take that chance. And the ownership, you know, Egmont Sonderling and, and uh, my general manager um, allowed me, Kearney. you know, Kearney L. Anderson uh, allowed me that freedom and, and to use that creativity and put it on the air. So wow, you can't do that today. Program directors don't have that, no. that option. No, not anymore. No, yeah, not I mean, up for discussion. And you had five di distinct different kinds of DJs, too. I mean, Ralphie played yeah. his particular thing. Mickey played his style. Kenny had his Zach's Janelle style. Mm -hmm. uh, Farley had his, you know, Kenny, whatever, you know. It was very, very raw, funky stuff. Yeah. But, you know, to make you think back, you know, this is what I mean about how different it was. We were playing ministry, talking heads. We played so much different stuff back then. They yep. didn't care what it was or who it was. It was like, man, that's a dance track. That's a dance record. That's a great record. Magnificent right. Seven, you know, Bostitch by Yellow. Those were new wave records, man. But we didn't consider it that. We just played That's right. It. That's right. And to have it show up on the radio like it was, not only, you know, in the mixes, even, even when Disco DAI was doing the mixes, it was disco. That was it. There was no other yeah. music in those mixes. But then, Mickey, you guys come along. And, you know, for us disco DJs, because I started in seven years, like, oh, wow, there's mixes back on the radio. This is great. Because what it also helped with Mickey and Lee, what you guys did for all the club DJs, is you enabled a lot of the club DJs to play a lot of shit they couldn't possibly ever play because it was getting exposure in those mixes. So you could tell the club owner, hey, shut up, asshole. It's all over the radio. I'm mixing. Right. Yeah, they had you to know? play what we were playing. Or they <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys dictated what was allowable and acceptable, whether you were DJing, like, where did Alex work, Mickey? Pepper Plums, way out in the north side or to the south side. No matter where you worked, if it was in the mixes, you're safe. You don't have to worry about getting fired as a club DJ. Hey, Sal, I remember right. one time, I think I was with Lee, and we were at Russian Division. Hey, you know how that cars would always circle around and everything yep, yep. and jam their boom box. I remember one time we're sitting there and we we're telling jokes and uh, like we do and stuff. And all of a sudden somebody else is with us. All of a sudden we said, Hey, has anybody heard any station besides BMX? I mean, <laughs> right. I've never heard bon every, car, every, every car, every car that yeah. came by. Echoing That's right. Ever. That's right. That'll never happen again. Never happen again. No. 
And yeah. I think the but see, the- I, I knew that when I started seeing things and hearing things like that and the feedback that we got almost immediately in putting the mixers on the air. And then when we did the Da Vinci Manor, the first oh, yeah. the first show oh. of the Hot Mix 5, and when I introduced my air staff, Marco and Veronique and all the all the guys, you know, people going, yeah, 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 Marco. But when I brought up the Hot Mix 5, it was like the freaking Beatles that walked in. Yeah. <laughs> it was right. like huge. I, I remember, went, hey, oh, Luke, my God. I remember before the place opened, I was outside. I think I was with you, Lee. And some guy goes, can let me, can, he goes, hey, you're Mickey. Can I have your autograph? And I looked at you. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Star was born. Just yeah, like, just like that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, yeah. When you, that's when you know, saying, okay, I think we hit it. I think no question. Ahead. No question. Yeah. I knew it. I, I felt it in my bones. And, and the whole idea was, to, and when I picked the five, actually, it was, it was supposed to be six. Six, yeah. Right? Now, yeah, who was the guy's it. name? Yeah. That, Jeff, that Jeff Davis. Jeff, Jeff was Davis. At the Century. He was at the Century Disco at the time over by Gramophone. And, yep. Yeah. Yep. Now, whatever happened up. to him? I don't know. He never showed up at a meeting because I guess right. he kind of wanted to be the hot mix one. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> oh well, and uh, yeah, it's a shame, but uh, that's how it yeah, turned out. Yeah, yep. But it wasn't going to be the hot mix six, and and Jeff Davis didn't show up, and uh, so it became the hot mix five. And yeah, and you know the, the rest is history. When, when the I don't know, I want to say when well, you were at DCI before you got to BMX, right? Yeah, you were yeah. at DCI first. Yep, yeah. yeah. and um. When the mixes hit, you know, and, and here's a here's the deal in the WBMX group. Let me pull this up here. In the WBMX, Lee, it's amazing how um, you know, I think you and I, Mickey, and you have you've got a pretty damn good recall, Mick, and it's great. But a lot of people have a lot of fuzziness. Like Lee and I, when Lee and I were talking earlier this week, we were talking about how some people have it all discombobulated. You know what I mean? They have DAI mixed up, or they have B96 mixed up. So they have you, Mickey, like, oh, yeah, Mickey Oliver on B96. No, Mickey, <laughs> not, you know, that was <laughs> the after era. And, and, it, yeah. it's, and it's hard to tell somebody without saying, because they want to argue with you over this whole deal. It's like, Look, I don't want to argue. I'm just telling you, this is the history. If it offends you, then maybe seek some counseling. <laughs> but it is so discombobulated when you, yeah. you know, and then when you like, Mickey, you go back and you're, you know, you're, th- you're thinking about songs like the Granger, Shine Your Light, or, you know, anything we played, or even Rock Your World, Detroit, all, people get that mixed up and they think, oh, yeah, that was house music. Said, no, none of that was, there was no house. It wasn't house music. That was club music. And you try and educate people on that. It's like, it's, it's almost like banging your head off the wall. It's like talking to foster yeah. cubs. It's very hard. You know, it, it is. And But because the house movement made more noise than anybody else, you know, as time went on, then it all kind of got mixed together. And it was called all, all of it was called house. So I think that, that was part of the confusion. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> yeah. my, my motto when I used to play was um, for the radio show was to try to do something that somebody didn't know they could do. So right. so I had my razor blade. And I remember one time I made a beat track and I took the most popular rock songs and I just faded each one in for the hook for those uh, eight bars and then faded out and then one, one, two, two, three, and another one. And that just blew up everybody's mind. Yeah. Even yeah. Uh, I played uh, for Julian's last gig and I think Frankie Hollywood goes, he goes, this is the guy that had the only one that had the balls to play ACDC. <laughs> I go, yeah, but the way I played it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. How you did it was the magic. And I remember one, uh, one mix in particular you did with a bunch of the old Motown songs. You remember yeah. that one? He, yeah. he did a, a medley of, of Supremes and, and stuff like that. I'm like, damn, yeah. he made it sound so good, you know? <laughs> and that was the creativity. That's what made all that yeah. stuff work in was the right, right. place. So, you know, look at the alternatives we got today, Mick. You got a million yeah. alternatives. We didn't have those alternatives. This was yeah. like being on, 
you know, it was like making out with the hottest chick in the world every Friday and Saturday. Hey, really? night. Remember, I took a sheet Good Times and I just looped that instrumental and I ran jokes of Rodney Dangerfield and oh, Richard absolutely. Pryor over it. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yep. See, but that that was that was real creativity. Yeah. And and the and the mix shows they don't have that leverage or that opportunity to to be that creative and and people listened religiously when those mixes came on our cum was huge it was so many people listening wow. and it went like that way every weekend and even during the week when we started doing the mini mixes during the week the hot oh, yeah. uh, lunch yeah. mix and you know right. the five o'clock jam and, and it, it it was magical it was magical and what was funny was we did that for at least a year, maybe almost two years before GCI even attempted to do anything to oh, answer wow. what we were doing. Come By then, it was, it was over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was over. Yeah. They, could, they couldn't compete. Wow. Well, GCI was, at that time, too, they, uh, they were dead set on Evan Luck as our afternoon cruise guy. Um, you know, they were so personality. They, they didn't want, it's like, they didn't want anything to interfere with their personality and BMX is more of just a damn, I mean, not nothing against their, their <clears throat> talent and GCI was phenomenal too, but BMX was just a, a fun, more fun station to listen to at that yeah. era. It really was. Yeah. No we're hitting all cylinders. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I opened it up and, and included more music versus keeping the playlist narrow and tight. Mm, okay. um, and, and it was by design. That's why I picked the different uh, mixers, uh, guys that became the Hot Mix 5. They represented different parts of the geographical Chicagoland area. Mickey was out in the, um, the southeast suburbs in, in <laughs> Indiana, and, and Kenny was in the, in, in the city, and Farley and Ralphie and – and Scott was what? He was out in the western suburbs, western and northern suburbs. It was so, South Early, yeah, South Early, yeah. and then that, yeah. yeah. So it, it it covered the entire market without any borders or or racial prejudice. It it appealed to black, white, Hispanic, Asian, it did. everybody, gay, non-gay, it, it, and I didn't care. I wanted more ears. To listen to WBMX, that was the objective. Period, <clears throat> and it just so happened that the base uh, stayed around sixty-five, seventy percent black, and the rest, the other twenty-five, thirty-five percent, it, it fluctuated from book to book. Was non-black. At the same time, GCI was in the eighty, ninety percent right, black. Right, right. So <clears throat> that was fine with me. Yeah, and you know. Those the music, you know. Lee and I were talking about this earlier, Mick, last week or a couple of days ago when I talked when we were talking, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> everything wasn't so shuffled into this culture thing. Oh, it's a cult. This is culture. No. It was just, man. It was just music. We were we yeah. we just had fun. You know, you want to call a house? Fine. You want to call? You know, uh, Paul Sabu rock on house, even though it's disco. I don't. It was. It was. We listened to so many different kinds of dance music then, mm -hmm. and we didn't need to have it shoved shoved into this bullshit. It's culture. Let's build a culture around it. There were no. just people who were listening to some fun music, having a good time. And they went back and do the their life, and when they wanted to escape, they had the mixes in the clubs uh -huh. and enjoyed all kinds of different music. Well, the and whole I, concept of, of of culture came along, I think, between the era of house music exploding and hip hop mm -hmm. and both genres of, of those, those two genres was trying to claim their existence and purpose. So they, they had to call it something and, and it, it kind of evolved in like the hip hop culture, the house music culture, the house heads, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So everybody was trying to build their own little brand and, and identity. And then there was fractions within both of those, you know, the different levels or types of house, deep house. Subgenres, sub yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the steppers will look at you and go, wait a minute, man. what about, you know, right. them steppers, them, them people was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> them steppers is nuts. You don't want to mess with them. they die them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they kick your ass, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so everybody was, you know, very true to what they loved. 
And and that's cool. I mean, I didn't never I never had a problem with that. A couple of people checking in here. Joe I, I know Jojo Collins. Jojo's I think Jojo's running working at a TV or radio station. She's from here. He worked. I think Jojo was at the bus for a brief. Remember the bus, Mickey? Yeah, out by yeah. you, man. Yeah, that was yeah, that was down. Uh, um, can't think of that those neighborhoods down Kentucky. there. Yeah. They were they were out of. I think the station was in the Milners that owned that the station. Okay. Uh, ZZ says hello. Give him hey, a call. Z. Nick. <laughs> and uh, George, Jungle George checking in. We had George on a uh, couple. Well, God, it's been about two three months. We had George, another great guy, another great DJ, great guy, yeah. like good stuff, and a down to earth, decent. One, another guy that you know i've stayed in touch with through the years because i genuinely like him as a human being and mm -hmm. lee you know how i am there's not many people i can say that about yep yep no you're true to that yeah bourbon hey. a that's where it was all right mickey bourbon a, yeah. lee first that's time it. you guys met bmx first. <laughs> uh yeah i think it was at the station huh are you, you, yeah, came, are you, you yeah. came down yeah, turned yeah. turned and mix and mix oh, yeah. I thought you met Mickey. I thought you wanted to go see him at a club. Didn't you go see him at a club? That was later. Yeah, yeah. later. Yeah, that's where I met my uh, that's where you... wife. At yes, that, at that club. Yeah. <laughs> Which one was that, Lee? What club was that? Uh, we we probably better cut that part short, Lee. <laughs> 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 Don't tell anyone. Yeah, we just, we just no, was, that? Yeah. was that smugglers? <laughs> yeah, some counties in the state might not like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, smugglers yeah, I, in. Yeah. yeah, smugglers in. Yeah. 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 Was smugglers, huh? Wow. Yeah. 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 Was it? Was it on your birthday? Whose birthday was it? I think was it was it? my birthday. Yeah. That was when yeah. you the night yeah. day you met. Mar Marco uh, and I came out there that night. Marco's. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Marky should come contest. out a lot and hang out. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he, he like and, <laughs> and real quick, if you're just joining us, it's the Back in the Day Show. Salam out of here, sponsored by Digital Savior Chicago. Mickey Mix and Oliver on the show, and Lee Michaels, our Yoda from WBMX, who made it all, put it all together, joining us here on the show. For those of you who don't know, now you know. Okay, now you know. there you go. And ZZ, yes, oh, ZZ, another guy. Does, did a lot of shows in what 2013, 14, 15, 16? A lot, a lot of shows. Yeah, All the, not of even sh before he did. He was. Oh yeah, yeah, shows. even before. But I mean, yeah. what, was it the Portage? I think it was at the Portage. Portage yeah. was his last thing he did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I played several times for the Big Z. Yeah, really, another another guy, dynamite guy. Oh yeah. Yeah, you come across some really nice people. You know, the same thing in radio. You come across some really yeah. great guys. That's and then, right. you, then you come, like, you know, how I, I come across a couple people, and I'm wondering, why aren't they on an airplane that went down into a mountainside? <laughs> it's either one or the other, you know? You, yeah, exactly. One side or the other. But for the most part, we've all known each other for a long time, and yeah. um, it's always been like family. It really yep, is. We've grown up, grown up old with each other, you know? Yeah. Throughout the years. <laughs> I we like might not see each other all the time, but, you know, the... The love and respect never dies. That's right. Well, aside from just being decent stand-up people, yeah, uh, you're also very visionary, forward-thinking, and not lost. You know, mm -hmm. you you have to be visionary. I mean, Mickey, the shit you did in 1981, nobody was thinking about. That's with true. the medleys. Yeah, <laughs> you know, nobody thought about going from 118 BPMs to 151. <laughs> You know, <laughs> nobody and make it that. work. And make yeah. it work. It sounds yeah. good. I yeah. made that an illusion using uh, moving the snares closer on editing tape. Mm -hmm. It was actually playing at their normal speeds. It's just when I moved the snares closer, the mm -hmm. two beats and the four beats, it, it was playing faster, but it was actually yeah. still playing at the regular BPM. So it created an illusion. Interesting. On that. How, oh. many, how many edits did you have on just that from Celebration and the Whip and Mick? You know, it's always a weird thing. You remember a number. I don't know if you remember, but do you remember? No, but I, 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 I'm I, sure it was over 100 just on that thing. Was it that many? Jeez. It was pretty intense, yeah. yeah you you know, killed a lot of tape with that blade. Yeah, you know, that one was like, I said, I was doing that medley, and I go, how am I going to end it? Because you got to really end it to people go, wow. So uh, I did 122 BPM to 160. Wow. But not speeding up the records or slowing them. And then was it Outcome to Freaks was used at the end, right? From Was Not Was, wasn't it Outcome to Freaks? Uh, into the into the beginning ascent of the Strikers, right? Oh, at the beginning? 
And, no, at the end. No, because even at the end, after uh, after Whip it, I think it went into uh, oh Blues Brothers. That's right, Blues Brothers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and that was great, man. Because you know <laughs> that's the era. You know, yeah. I mean, the Blues yeah. Brothers were the hottest thing in the world at that time. That's true. And, and I I had the medley. It opened with the door opening, and it ended with the door closing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> And that was the Strikers, right? The opening of a body music. That's oh, it might have been, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. The Strikers. I don't remember though. I think it might have been a sound effect record. Hey, uh, quick mm. question here, uh, Peter Aparicio. Uh, do you still have any of your old mixes? Do you still have any of your reels? Oh yeah, yeah. It's on my website, MickeyOliver.com. I got. No, but do you have the physical possession? Of yeah. Any of, oh, you still have good for you. Yeah, I, I converted them to digital and I sell them on a USB like sixteen hours. So uh, wow. we're, we're going to, well, let me uh, switch the uh, screen here. So those of you who want to find Mickey's website, I'm going to switch over here. Excuse me for a moment. I got it already here. I just got to pull it up. Uh, where is it? Can you get here? Mickey, I'll Come down. There you go. I got so many, there's so many windows. As you can see how many windows I have open on that yeah. screen. Yeah, go there to Mickey's go. website. Go to Mickey Oliver. Get the digital USB as opposed to the analog USB, I guess. <laughs> 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 That's like saying live in concert. Well, so you, uh, you get Mickey's bio, upcoming shows. You got a boat show coming up, right, Mick? Uh, yeah, uh, June 5th, and then I, we got a big Hot Mix 5 reunion June 5th later. So, No, gotta... which, which version of the Hot Mix? It's like I always ask, which version of Kiss is it? Uh, which I version think, of the Hot Mix 5? I think Scott's not there and Julian's there. Okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, look at that powerhouse. Nice. Yeah. That's a little powerhouse. Right. Can I tell you guys something real funny? Yeah. Yeah, so please. <laughs> I, went, I went out with uh, Rodney Dangerfield, right, one night. And uh, I don't know if he was putting me on or not. He looks at me and he goes, hey, you know, that's eh, just my wife. Yeah, I don't think that guy's having a problem. I go, what's wrong with your wife? He goes, I found out she had VD. I go, oh, I thought, you know, I thought guys telling me about his wife. I go, what'd you do? He goes, well, what would you do? I go, I went to my doctor. I go, what did he say? He says, well, he immediately gave himself a shot in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and so he goes to Rodney, how'd you find out? He goes, well, four of my friends told me. He goes, now I know why she says I'm one in a million. <laughs> could you imagine hanging out with that guy for two hours? No. Oh. Uh -uh. I, could, I don't me, think I could handle it. Then he told me, yeah, I got problems with my daughter. I go, what's wrong with her? He goes, uh, everybody calls her FedEx. I go, I go, why? Because if you go out with her, she absolutely positively has to be there overnight. <laughs> How did he come up with that stuff, man? It was. You know what? He, those were the first time he came up with them. Then he wrote them down on a napkin, put them in his pocket. Oh, wow. So he was trying them out on you. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you have a heart attack and die, they'd say, oh, yeah, that's good shit, man. I got to use that one. I yeah, love Rodney. He, he, he was, was, like he was a, hilarious. Yeah, he goes, you guys have a lot of crime in Chicago? Oh, yeah. He goes, yeah, boy, I do. I have it bad at my place. He goes, they've been ransacking me. He goes, I thought I'd fix them, though. He goes, uh, he goes I went to close my window the other day, and some guy's hands were there. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes so what I did, he goes, I left the lights on, music playing. I put a note in the door. Uh, I'm upstairs busy. So he got, he, I come home, and the place got ransacked. And the guy goes, I looked everywhere for you. I couldn't find you. <laughs> <laughs> Who comes up, up with stuff that? like that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> See, and he felt, and he was comfortable enough to hang out with you and tell you that shit. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Was that here like, in Vegas? Uh, no, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort, oh wow. wow! It was like nothing. He just said it like rolling off the top of his. He <laughs> <laughs> never stopped performing. No, he never did. Off the stage and on the stage. Yeah. 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 He was a funny guy. I told Sally. He told me. He goes, hey, kid. Just because we go out tonight, does that mean we got to fall in love and call it right? <laughs> no, I'm not going to bother you. <laughs> well, you know, and, and we were talking about classic movies, you know, and oh, Caddyshack God. with Rodney definitely. And Mickey, did you ever see the making of Caddyshack when they talk about how much, how stoned everybody was? No. Harold, Ray, Harold Ray was said they were stoned literally around the clock and they were afraid wow. the studio wouldn't even let the movie get released. The daily, oh. what they called dailies back then, we used to have dailies. Now it's like B 
because you're editing right there, I, literally on the scene. But back yeah. then, they used to send dailies to get approval, non-approval, and the studio mm -hmm. thought Caddyshack was going to be an absolute flop. Shows you how much the studios really know, right? Yeah. 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 You know. uh, well, we got Lee Michaels in the house with Mickey Mix and Oliver. You can see that's Lee's visit Lee on Facebook as well. See, I pulled that up. See, I did that Lee. Yeah, uh, that's, that, nice. that's very cool. Yeah. The Blue Man. <laughs> yeah, how'd you do that? It looks like a blueprint. And look, well, well it, you know, it, see, here's the bullshit. What's up with the hair? What hair? Right. <laughs> that was actually that was about four or five years ago. So I had a little hair on that side of the head. <laughs> yeah, I was doing a I was doing a Trump thing, a little comb over. Hey, wait but, a minute! You know, I think I remember that, the hair on the other side. Well, yeah. <laughs> what happened? So you know what they didn't do? He didn't turn the camera around. Mick. Remember, we were trying to figure out how to turn the camera around. That picture was drawn by a lady in in Europe somewhere. Uh, I was on the air. And she drew that, and and along with several other people, she was she was just, I guess, enjoyed drawing people. And I was on the air one night, and she captured that. So no, she, wow, she sent it to me, and that's I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Mark Young joining us too. I, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna hope because remember, Mick, you were I think you were here, and Lee, I think you, Mark was the young MC. That's right. Right. He was at That's GCI, right. right? Another guy, talented guy, man. Yep. They were, you know, when we were doing cyber, remember when I told you, Lee, when I, Mickey, we were doing cyber radio, right? So I had my office, the offices in Brookfield, and I was streaming GCI for Armando to do him a favor. And now Roy paid me with like a $20 gift certificate to California Keep Pizza Kitchen, which I wouldn't <laughs> wipe my ass with. I wouldn't eat there if it was the last place on earth. So anyways... <laughs> I, I dozed off at my desk and I wake up and I hear this guy on. It's like Saturday morning because Armando was running the mixes on GCI. Right. And I hear this guy and he's hilarious, man. And this has got to be 90, end of 97, 98. And I'm like, man, who is it? It was Joe Soto. Joe, yeah. Joe. He was he was doing like one shift, and I called the radio. I said, "Dude, who are you? <laughs> Where did you come from? And why are you on this early in the morning?" He said, oh, right? "I appreciate that." And then he wound up going to Dallas uh, for a while before he came back home. But that's you know, right. It's amazing being online, you know. And again, when you take forward, and we were online, Lee, you were online in the eighties too, just like me. We were online. That's right. You think yeah. the amount the amount of stuff you discover when you're online. Uh, and we knew there was a whole new world out there, just like when you launched, when you started doing the mixes at 80, in 81, there was no alternative. We knew all the alternatives mm -hmm. come later, but the the because the people don't work in the field like we do, when they discovered stuff like the mixes, it was like, holy cow, this is a whole different world, which was why it made it unique, because nobody else had the balls or the brains to do it. Now, can you imagine if if the internet was around in the eighties when we were doing mixes? Oh, be a whole different and, thing now. <laughs> and, and and a pandemic during that time. Yeah. With everybody at home, we would have been pulling twenty five, thirty shares. He would yeah. be killing it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but see, I don't know because again, you know, when you have the choices, we didn't have choices then. And, and if you have the internet, you have choice. You know what I mean? If well, you, yeah. you know, we have choice. We but, didn't have uh, choice. Uh, yeah, assuming that we, we would have had that same impact. If, if you could just take the technology oh, right, of the day right. and move it back to 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, uh, I, I can't imagine the impact that that station would have had. Just yeah. think, of, just think of how many pop lockers and breakers would have broken their neck on online and everybody yeah. would have said, we can't do that. We've got to stop that. Can't have That's that right. happen. That's yeah, right. Think about it. I was getting hired in all across America, and I was showing up, and guys are going, uh, I'm the Mickey of the group, and this is the Ralphie. And I'm like, say what? He goes, oh, yeah, we have our Hot Mix 5 here. Like, I'm not that's even right. broadcast here. He goes, well, that's people get their tapes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Sending those cassettes all over the country. I was sitting in, in Mexico, in Cancun, I think it was. No, no, Puerto Vallarta. And sitting on the beach, and all of a sudden I hear Saturday Night Live, ain't no jive, <laughs> Chicago Dance Party on one hundred two point seven BMX, and I'm going, damn, I need another drink because I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm tripping now. <laughs> and I turn around, there was a couple sitting behind me, 
and they were they had the ghetto blaster out there and boom box and and I, I had to get up and go over and ask them and say you guys must be you have to be from chicago they said no we're from cleveland i said cleveland <laughs> cleveland what, what, I mean, what are you doing how did you get this this music the, well our son goes to uh loyola university and he sends these tapes home every week and we wash the cars and and clean the house and we love it wow and i went wow wow that was a it, it, that tripped me out i'm in mexico and i'm yeah. hearing people play these mixes on their boom box on the beach wow and, and and that happened several times i was working in san francisco and this guy out on out on the pier 35 selling hot dogs and popcorn and and sodas and we go over there every 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 other day to buy a hot dog and I, and and I, and I realized these were mixes from BMX because I heard my voice and I heard a Mondo on there. Wow! And I went, wow, dude, where'd you get those tapes from? He goes, my cousin lives in Chicago. He sends them to me every week, and I love it. I play it out here, and people <laughs> like it. And I said, oh, that's cool. I said, well, I work over at KML. Uh, you think that uh, that sound would work here in San Francisco? He goes, yeah, yeah, it probably would. So he, he kind of fluffed it off. I guess he didn't believe, you know, I worked at the station, number one. He said, yeah, well, you, you want a hot dog? I said, yeah, give me a dog and a Coke. And, you know, I went on back to the office and I called the Mondo. I said, Mondo, I'm going to uh, prepay a ticket for you. Be on a plane Friday. Come out here, bring me five hours of those tapes. And, <laughs> and we're going to rock it in San Francisco. I did it. Came back that next Monday. The guy, he said, hey, you, 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 come here. <laughs> I said, yeah, what's up? He goes, did you do that? I said, do what? I'm playing it off. Like He says, everybody in town is talking about KML and these mixes that were played over, over the weekend. I said, yeah, you told me it would work, so I gave it a shot. He goes, man, do you realize what you did? I said, no, what did I do? He said, you just killed every club in town because nobody's going to go out. <laughs> wow. And that station went to number one in one rating period. Yeah, I remember that. It was yeah. number one. Yeah. Hey, yep. you got a, we got a uh, George, one of the guys who posts a lot in the BMX group. He's, he's, he's in 1986, Waikiki Beach, blasting a mixtape from Mickey, and dozens of people came up to here. And they knew it was WBMX in Chicago. Wow. <laughs> See? Uh -huh. Amazing. Oh, remember, we, you know, in about 05, when did I start working on the website? Because we just had the picture of you basically forever from Gavin. And then we started building yeah, the yeah. website. And um, I had a bunch of people out of nowhere. Mickey, people were sending mixtapes in from South America, wow. from Europe. Because we had said, hey, if you have old, any of your old mixes, um, send them right. to us. We'll digitize them, turn around, send them back to you, and send them to you on CD. Mm -hmm. So I wound up with, I mean, I honestly got for a while that a WBMX Hot Mix Classics channel that I had uh, when I still was with him. Um, I had almost 500 mixes that we wow. created wow. Of, of all those old mixes. And dude, somebody had one of my hot lunch mixes on there. It was a trip. Somebody actually had one of my mixes from 82 when I was at Whitney Young. That's, That's what I, put, I was putting you on, remember? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was, I couldn't believe it. I said, oh, my God, somebody actually, I actually finally have a copy of some of my work when I was still young, thin, and hairy, you know? What were was, you, three? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good times back then. Yeah. Uh, look at that. There's a picture of Farley, oh, wow. Rocky, CC. Uh, there's a picture I wanted to show you guys. You know, these are some of the posts that are in the group, man. And you know, it's amazing, too, Nick Lee, when you look at the posts, how much of an impact. And there's different generations. There's the early generation, you know, the old schooler guys like me who look and go, where's BB, you know, where's the, where's Womack and Womack? Cause, you know, and that wasn't just about house, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I was a pure art. And there are a <laughs> lot of people who listen to BMX and GCI because where else are you going to find Stephanie Mills? Or any of that stuff. You're gonna find that anywhere. So we would go to those things. And in the, the mixture of people on the BMX group is really great because you've got the, the old, you know, the disco. I'm not calling it a house. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna call a record uh from 1978 house. 
Sorry, it's this right. one. But the, and then you got and this guy and Mario Luna has got a great book with Mickey the Flyers that he's got. And this book will blow you away, dude. Oh yeah, mm. he oh, has yeah. got just phenomenal pictures. And I here's a picture that uh, Sam Gamboa posted. Oh Sam, know, yeah. yeah, Sam. A couple pictures there. Uh, but you know, when you look at the post, you see the house, you see the uh, you know, the acid, but then you see the RB stuff too, like get down on it. You know, and a lot of people don't realize, you know, I don't well, when you were at Oliver's, you didn't play any videos, right? Uh, no, and did I, you, but they I did, can't, the other guys did, yeah. But I can't, did you play videos when you're at the cottage with me too, or was it just Kenny? Probably just Kenny, yeah, because yeah. you know, when you think about it, when you go back. <laughs> A lot of people don't remember that there were actually videos to a lot of these songs. I mean, there's a video for Dominatrix, but nobody knew that. So in the group, when we go ahead and you put these things in the group, I'd be like, damn, I didn't know there was a music video for that. Nobody even knew there was a music video for Starpoint, you know, Object of My Desire. And there's Renee Diggs looking as hot as could possibly be in the video. Well, and the problem was that there weren't any video outlets that was playing that stuff it because was just I mean, it was only MTV. Yeah, it was no, only it was MTV. Up, yeah, and it was yeah. us in the clubs and the club guys, you know, <laughs> right. early on. Because like Warren just Jones, this was a radio record, but we wanted to right. play it in the clubs. You know what I mean? So you played the video because the video was a trip. Same thing yeah. with a lot of the other stuff. Oh, this was a this was a good post. You missed that, Lee, Mick? The fire hydrant? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, right. You know the best part about the city hydrant? life. Yeah, you know what the best part about the hydrant was, you didn't have to worry if somebody peed in the water because you weren't swimming in it. When <laughs> <laughs> people blowing their nose and sl slobbering all over the place, another great record, Lasians. You know, yeah, you know, the diversity in the group, and there's a lot of posts Lee about you, about Mickey, about even you know, all the guys. You know, and it, and it's about the culture. It's about everything we grew up with in that era, and trying to keep it focused in that era so it doesn't stray into the b96 era um is a challenge and there's a couple moderate and we actually sent you an invitation lee as a moderator so whenever you go i, I sent you just for a moderator too even though you're in the group mm -hmm. I, I i don't know if you saw it but i got you in there as a moderator too yep yep but these are i mean mickey think about how much music you guys broke on the radio oh yeah tons i mean even Johnny, do you know Johnny, right? At Atlantic, Mick? Yeah. I mean, you know, Johnny, if it wasn't for BMX and B96 through those years, half those records that hit, even Nancy Martin can't believe, those records would have never really made it anywhere if it wasn't for those things exploding here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. That was nice of him to recognize that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, a funny story about Johnny. When I had, you remember when I had modern tracks, right? Yeah. And um, he had a track. It was a funk phenomenon. Oh, I, yeah. I said, John, let me put this out on modern tricks, please. I said, this thing is killer. He says, all right. I said, you have a radio edit of it? He said, no. I said, can I do a radio edit? Okay. So we did a radio edit and wound up getting like 60 ads at the stations off the modern trick because he never had, he didn't have to pay the money to go have an edit done. He just used the modern. So he said, hey, can you get me 20 more CDs? I got, I got to send more to stay. I'm like, all right, fine. I'm charging people for subscriptions. I might as well right. get copies of a song. But there's a lot of songs through the years, I mean, that people don't realize that really emanated off these mixes. Totally. Uh, they and and a lot of them spilled into the rotation eventually. Yeah, you know, D Train, uh, Rocky World, Jimmy Ross. Uh, I mean, how hot was Jimmy Ross, right, Mick? First true, yeah, big time, big time. Karen Silver, so fine. <coughs> yeah, remember and that? Here's another one. I put the video in here, right? Nobody even knew there was a video for Howard Johnson, Lee. Yeah, and there's an actual performance video of Howard Johnson with I think it was the girls from Soul Train, some of the dancers dancing with him. In okay. The, People see the video, like, sure, I never even know there was a video for it. And that's I don't, the beauty. I, don't know that I ever saw it. Yeah, yeah that, that's the beauty of because Mickey, I go dig up mixes of your stuff, remixes of your stuff. I know where to find everything. You know, nobody does. I'm, I'm just a nerd, so I know where all this shit is buried. So when you put the stuff in the groups and people see this stuff, they're like, holy shit, I didn't realize that. And this group has grown, nine, has added 9,000 people since June of last year. So, Not bad. Yeah, you know, and remember, Lee, I told you I was just going to, I wasn't going to really work on it anymore, and then all of a sudden it just started getting hot. I said, okay, well, maybe Debbie people. Deb. Daz Band. Yep. Another great Good video. Star. 
Yeah. And then, you know, Intensity, Mickey, I've got the version, you know, we've got Intensity up here okay. still. And you know what else gets a lot of love? Never let go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I still get when I play out. It's always somebody comes up to me and goes, can you play Never Let Go? So let me ask you something. How the hell did, I mean, because that was with Paris Gray before she worked with, uh, what's his name in Detroit? So yeah. how how did that come about working with Par with uh, well at that time it was what Shauna Jackson right Shauna I mean, her yeah name. yeah that's her real name Shauna yeah. Jackson yeah so uh, uh, so I she decided to go Shauna J but yeah I met her through somebody a buddy of mine and uh, I said oh yeah you know I, I told her I says you you got the pipes <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, so we did uh, two or three songs together yeah, it was never let go and then what were the, the what were the other ones uh, hard on hold. And I, I, I like it was another one. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then I wonder, how did she wind up in Detroit? Uh, uh, Kevin Saunderson came calling and mm -hmm. he says, hey, you got the best singer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, sign her up. And, you, uh, nice. So what was the deal? I mean, there was M Records. That was you, uh, just yeah. you though, right? M right. was you, right? And then right. Mix 5 was the collective, right? Right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, me, Kenny Ralph. Yeah. And, you know, before we uh, cut out here, Magnum Force, Mickey, when you were playing them. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. What was the other? Not the, the Share My Love was beautiful. It was a great ballad. Uh, but there was there was Cool and there was another one by Magnum Force that you were playing. Uh, I, I don't remember. Because. Cool sounded like your place or mine by the Barcase. I thought the Barcase literally ripped Magnum Force's song away from them <laughs> when they did it. But there was another track by Magnum Force. So how'd you how'd you wind? I mean, did they ever thank you? Did they know you were playing it? Were they friends of yours? That oh uh, yeah, uh, we had a, our mutual friend like with Lee was Gus Redman. <laughs> so Gus would always chit chat with him and say, you know, Mickey's playing and Lee's blah blah blah. And so yeah, they always knew what was shaking. Oh, and speaking of that, make you check this out, right? So one of the ladies who posts in the group, Lee, remember I told you it was the engineer's wife? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was his name? It's in the group. Oh, God. But I he just, says hello. Yeah. He's got a, I mean, that's yeah. the beauty of the group, too, Mick. There's people who, here's a guy that Lee hasn't seen, what, probably 35 years, right? Yeah, yeah. So probably 79, 80. Yeah, but yet... The memories are still there because it's, yeah. it's an important part of history, at least from you know from an entertainment standpoint, yeah. uh, locally and internationally. Because what you guys did, yeah, you know, and New York likes to claim to be the centerpiece of everything. I disagree, no, but uh, what we did here in Chicago, I mean, what, you know, from the movie industry, you know, the movie industry exploded within two years. Once Old Man Daly died, the movie industry took off because Daly refused to allow a lot of movies to be filmed here. So once the old man passed away, next thing you know, we're getting work left and right as actors and writers. And then the music wise, you know, you, sure, you had record roll, but after disco, man, it was house music. It literally saved the dance music industry. And it came from here. And that music emanated from the mix shows. It set the right. pace. I don't care what they were playing at Paradise Garage, because there wasn't anything we weren't playing already in the clubs. But the, the stuff you guys were doing was something that, from here, didn't have a lot of help, and yet it still exploded everywhere. Yeah, all over you Europe. Know? I used to go every month to Europe for a while. What did you what, did you spend in the UK, Mick? Every month for quite a while. Yeah. Who's the guy? God, I got to Grant, you know, uh, Grant, uh, Graham, no, Graham Park, you know, Graham? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Graham's an old schooler out in the UK, and he mm -hmm. still does a great house show. And old old guy, and he loves a lot of the stuff that we post here. All right, guys, I'm going to let you cut loose here. We've been on for an hour and a half, Mick. Wow. I haven't lasted that long since about I was 16. That's what <laughs> she said last night. <laughs> oh, dang. Hey, hey, we want a we want a second opinion. <laughs> oh, there you go. Try the mail. We're here till Thursday. Uh, <laughs> Lee, I'll uh, I'll bug the heck out of you in a day after tomorrow. Cool. Okay. Looking forward to it. All right. Lee, awesome. Lee Michaels. Safe. We got Lee Michaels, Mickey Mix, and Oliver. Don't forget, this will be available on demand. Uh, it'll be all the old shows are on the beach, Chicago. Yeah, Lee, did you see I put yours up? No. Okay. 
Yeah, I got yours, the one that we did in February. Oh, wow. Okay. And then Mickey, yours will be up. Uh, Sweet. It, yeah. Hey, look at that. There you go. Yeah. I'm still a fat bastard there. Look at that. Jesus Can you put Christ. some hair on that head, though? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's most people. Just put a picture. Most people have a forehead. I've got a six head. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I tell people when I take pictures, make sure you get all three of my chins in. I don't want to. There you go. Sure. That's <laughs> right. Don't miss nothing. And so I'll have it on there, uh, and then it'll be up on YouTube too. Guy, Mickey, love you. Lee, right. love you guys. Same here. Thank you. Thank and, you. Um, a talk blast. to you soon. Okay. Right. See you, Jim. All right, everybody. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye